Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to Light Dawns, a celebration and benefit for the National Lutheran Choir. I'm Tina Meckel, Executive Director of the Choir, and I'll be one of your co-hosts this afternoon. Joining me is Mr. Glenn Flatabo, Principal Partner and Auctioneer with Platabo Advancement, and NLC's longtime partner for this spring fundraising event. Welcome, Glenn. Tina, I am delighted to be with you. This is exciting. We are live downtown Minneapolis. We have hundreds and hundreds of people across the country gathering and rallying behind us tonight. This is important. We're gonna celebrate NLC tonight. We're gonna to celebrate what we accomplished in the past year. But most importantly, we're gonna lay the foundation for a really strong gathering again, coming together. And we want people to participate during the program. You can use the chat function. You can weigh in and share why NLC is important to you. And Tina, I'd like to start tonight and weigh in. I think of all the years that I've done this event and I've been in a ballroom and when the choir sings, the best way for me to say it, it moves my soul, Tina. I feel my childhood, I feel fellowship, I feel belonging. So we are gonna rally, we're gonna have a great night, Tina. We are, Glenn, and I'm so glad you're here with us for this event. We're actually celebrating our 35th anniversary this year, and I wanna take a minute to acknowledge our founder, Dr. Larry Fleming, and all the hundreds of people over the years who've made a difference in this organization being here today. And I really like to think that 35 years from now, there will be people thanking all of you and all of us for doing our part in our time to carry the organization forward. So here's our goal, everybody. Our goal tonight is to see if we can raise 150,000 or what has become our stretch goal. And our stretch goal is 175,000. And I wanna be crystal clear how we came up with the stretch goal. On Wednesday, Tina and I were doing a conference call and she said, Glenn, in a magical, perfect world, we would hit 175,000. And right now, Tina, I just looked at the meter, we're at $113,558. So we have just over $35,000 left to raise to hit 150,000. And here's what's so inspiring. Our board tonight, this is a big deal. Our board has decided that they will match every gift dollar for dollar that is pledged during our program up to 30,000. So with their support, we're gonna do this as a community. We're gonna lay the future and the foundation for coming back super strong. That is the most wonderful thing you could do today as light is dawning on all of us. So to donate this afternoon, visit our website at nlca.com or you can call our phone bank. You should see the number on the screen, 612-722-2301. We have four fabulous singers who are staffing our phone bank this afternoon, and I hope that you will give them a call. You can make a gift over the phone, or you can let them know that you'll be sending a check, and we will count your contribution this afternoon. Tina, we're excited. We're so thankful for everyone gathering and being with us tonight. We're excited that you're here tonight. Welcome everyone to Light Dons. Now let's take a look at some of the ways that the National Lutheran Choir has made a difference to our followers in the past year. On Monday, Thursday in 2020, we had been locked down for several weeks and we were all kind of reeling. And on Monday, Thursday, as a congregation, we normally join for dinner together. And so we joined in our individual homes on Zoom. And I played in the background as we all ate the CD from the National Lutheran Choir, Hymns We Love to Sing. And it just gave us a sense of grounding when everything else felt lost. The words that we all knew so well resonated in our hearts, brought us together, uh, felt, helped us to feel connected to one another, and especially helped us feel connected to God. Sharing sacred music during this virtual time has been important to me for the simple reason to share the love and the joy that I have for music and for the Lord. 
part of the church's being is singing. That has been subtracted from us during this pandemic. The National Lutheran Choir is among those who can remind us of the things we can't do, but then also do what we can do as well as possible. Even though we cannot do it face to face, that love and that joy has not gone away. Last March, when it felt like the world came to a screeching halt, it was incredible to see how the National Lutheran Choir pivoted to utilize technology to bring your music into people's lives, into people's homes. This choir in this past year remained strong. We couldn't gather in person as we normally would as audiences or as singers, but we could continue offering our programming. Those concerts have been stunningly put together and to be able to experience many different voices together has been such a gift. There were some surprise gifts with those programs that we presented virtually. The added uh, effectiveness of visuals to intensify the meaning. The various venues we recorded and with small groups that could be done safely. But the big surprise was the broad reach that this virtual programming offered. The collaboration that I had the privilege and honor of doing was to bring the Keith Hampton singers as a guest and I was glad to be able to do that virtually. This past Monday, Thursday, we used the Hope Lives concert. It gave us hope, it gave us joy. I think the diversity of the concert uh, to remind us of the diversity of our church and our world was so helpful for us after a year of being inside. The collaboration was, was especially meaningful to me because I believe in bringing people together. The possibility of live streaming or recording is not only for the small community of one church or one city or one community. It has a very, very far reach. Several people in my congregation have loved watching the NLC virtual choir concerts these past, uh, this past year. We are going to continue offering those virtual programs alongside of what we do in our in-person programming here in the Twin Cities. Well, the thing that I feel that NLC has brought to my life in their virtual performing and programming is a sense of staying connected. During these pandemic times, all of us have been forced to isolate. And as a result of the virtual performing, I felt that I was able to stay connected to NLC, to continue to hear the music, to continue to enjoy the, the poetry that goes along with the concerts and the entire NLC experience. Your music not only fills the hearts of those who listen, but has a cascading effect on those in our world who really are struggling right now. I think it's just very important because the ministry still is necessary. There are people who really do need to hear a word from the Lord. There are people who really uh, find that the music and this, particularly the sacred music is healing, is comforting, is soothing, is something that will uh, encourage them during this, these difficult times. When we went into the pandemic, it felt like our whole lives were suspended. And what I feel like the music of the National Lutheran Choir has done is held us in the midst of everything else being suspended and also challenged us to move forward into a future with hope. Tina, I think it is so moving how NLC was able to advance and fulfill their mission during COVID. Matter of fact, I remember being at my house last year watching this event with my wife and my two daughters in a moment when basically it felt like the world was collapsing. And the healing that it brought me, you know, our mission may have been more important in the last year than ever. You may be right about that. And, and thank you for what you shared we wouldn't have made it through this past year were it not for all of you, our supporters. So we just wanna take a moment to thank you for every click that you made, every time you shared our content, for the notes that you've sent to let us know that it made a difference. Thank you, we felt very connected with you and we appreciate that so very much. And Tina, there's no doubt that many communities have fallen in love with NLC and NLC has fallen in love with communities across 
our country. Matter of fact, we're going to join one of them right now. We have a chat ready to go. Let's check in on that chat. Let's go to North Carolina. Let's check in with our board member, Sandra Klein, who's watching from the campus of Lenore Rhine University. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Tina. Hi, everybody. Um, it's great to be here at Lenore Rhine today. What a beautiful space you're watching from. Can you tell us a little bit about it and who's with you? Absolutely. Uh, we are standing in Grace Chapel on the campus of Lenoran University in Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, one of the last places that the choir sang before the pandemic hit. And I am here with Dr. Ryan Lures, who is the director of the university choir here on campus, as well as the Hickory Choral Society, and actually sang with the National Lutheran Choir for, I believe, six years. Hello, Ryan. It's good to have you with us today, too. And little did we know when we were in that beautiful chapel more than a year ago, it would be one of the last times we sang together as a full ensemble with a live audience. So it uh, takes us back to what a year it's been and um, how fortunate we are now to be looking forward. I wish we could hear those sounds again right now. Yeah, that was a favorite moment for our students. They've been talking about it a lot because that was our final performance too prior to um, packing up shop here. So we, we remember fondly joining with the National Youth Choir in this space. Sandra, could you tell us a little bit about how your community has used some of the digital content that National Lutheran Choir has produced in the last year? Absolutely. Uh, that choir tour through the Southeast was terrific because we, uh, you guys got to sing for and with about 3,000 folks all across North Carolina, many of whom were Lutheran. And that was a great introduction to the National Lutheran Choir. Um, and then from there, after the pandemic hit, many of our congregations and the North Carolina Synod were able to use content from the National Lutheran Choir through this pandemic time to aid in worship and to, to be a big support of our congregations here in the North Carolina Senate. So thank you so much for that. Oh, that means the world to us that, that our work was able to fill some of those gaps that COVID created. And somehow the music of the church always finds a way through, through the hard times and through the joyful times. And the next generation comes along and picks up the torch to carry it forward. And Speaking of the next generation, Ryan Lures, can we talk to you for a moment? I think our listeners would love to know how your experience in the National Lutheran Choir is echoing through your career now. Sure. First off, I'm not even sure I'd be a choir director if not for the National Lutheran Choir. Uh, in the early 2000s, I was teaching band in North Central Iowa, and I would, I would cross the border whenever the National Lutheran Choir had a concert to attend. And it was those experiences where I knew I'm not quite in the right field. I need to do choral music. And it was because, as we just heard in that last segment, the National Lutheran Choir events and hymn festivals and performances, you leave them with more hope. <laughs> you leave them transformed. There's a narrative, there's a theme that take you from point A to point B. And not only that inspiring me to go into choral music more than I already was, but it also has affected my programming. These walls here have heard National Lutheran Choir favorites like Angel Song 2 by Will Todd. And that's become one that's a piece that's been requested by our audiences. And certainly, certainly that happened because of my involvement with the National Lutheran Choir as a singer. What a great feeling for all of us to know that that work is carrying forward and the experiences people have in the choir today ripple out into the community. For those of you participating in chat, let us know if you know any singers in the National Lutheran Choir and, and how you know them. We'd love to hear about that. And we're gonna hear some music in just a moment. And I'm gonna ask Ryan to introduce it for us because he's actually performing on the piece that we're going to hear. So Ryan, will you introduce our next piece of music? Be happy to. When I, when I hear this recording, it brings me back to the days of singing in the bass one section with Ron Peach on one side and Rob Reed on the other. And it's not just about the music, but also about the memories that we shared as we had all those performances together. But uh, Hold On by Marcus Garrett. I believe he wrote it when he was very young in his early 20s as a student at Hampton University in Virginia. And, and since then, we've gotten to know each other. We both did doctoral work at Florida State University. 
And now he's a, a choir director at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln and doing phenomenal work. All the choir directors watching out there, if you, you check out his work on the non-idiomatic uh, com compositions by black composers, he's done phenomenal scholarship in that area to amplify those voices and really helpful, really helpful to our, our field. But this, this spiritual hold on was a timely message of, of persevering in the face of adversity and, and carrying on and so glad you chose to include this one and I get to be a part of hearing it and that was a part of it as a singer too. So this is Marquez Garrett's Hold On. Wow, Tina, Hold On is definitely an anthem for this past year. There's no doubt, of course, that that song was recorded from light to light, but soon, and I think this is what most people, all of us are super excited about, is that we're gonna be able to gather and celebrate in person again. I know, we can't wait. And we did have to hold on, and hard times do happen, but hard times come to an end, and we're here today because light is dawning. And so our next live performances are scheduled for November and December of 2021. Those are our All Saints and Christmas concerts. And I'm really excited now that we get to hear from our artistic director, David Sherwin. His vision of coming back strong is really driving our plans for next year. So now let's hear from David Sherwin about our next chapter. I cannot wait to get back to singing with other people and experiencing the electricity that making music with others creates. This time apart during the pandemic, which is now a little over a year, has taught us many things. One thing it teaches us is to savor the freedom to do collaborative music making, to gather together to sing. Every fall when we come back together, there is this moment when we are suddenly singing in four-part harmony, and it feels so good. This year, it is going to feel especially good. There is a lot of pent-up energy right now to get together and sing for churches who have been silenced and in exile for 12 months and not allowed to sing together. There is a huge longing and desire to do that. We're still here. We're still strong. Join us. Sing with us. 
As the National Lutheran Choir, we care about safety. We care about safety for the singers, the staff, and the audiences. And our plans to spring back into action include careful considerations about how we can be safe. I can't wait to be back singing live concerts and looking out at the pews and seeing our groupies. You know who you are. Another thing that this time has taught us is we need to savor the earth as a gift of God. To that end, we get to premiere a new work, The Lament of the Earth, with text by Susan Palo Cherwin and music by Steve Heitzig. It celebrates and helps us savor the earth as a gift from God. We'll also bring that gift to the Pacific Northwest, an area of concentrated concern for care and love of the earth. One of the things I'm looking forward to in this next coming season is traveling to Seattle and singing at St. Mark's Cathedral. We need your help to come back, to come back strong. This past year has certainly been challenging with the loss of our ticket income, but with the help of many donors, we were able to continue and carry on strong. We want to continue that strength, and we need your help to do that. I am so looking forward to all of us to all come together to feel, listen, and to share that space together. And I want to be upfront with everyone. We do need your help, but it is working. As a matter of fact, Tina and I are watching the meter right now. We're at $142,973 right now. So we have just under $8,000 left to go to hit our first goal of $150,000. Tina, this is a big deal. It is a huge deal what we're doing together right now. Your funds right now in this moment, they allow us to build the platform and lay the foundation to come back with in-person live performances. Secondly, your funds tonight will allow us to continue to enhance and advance our digital programming. The program that was so critical during the past year and has become such a resource for NLC across the country. And thirdly, Tina, the funds that we raised tonight will allow us to launch our world premiere. It's a big deal. It is a big deal, Glenn, and we are so fortunate we get to come back strong with a brand new work that was created even before the pandemic started. It's received awards from Chorus America. It is highly anticipated. And one of the things that reaching our stretch goal will do is allow us to really do that premiere the right way. You only get one chance to do a world premiere, Glenn, and you've got to do it right. So thank you all for helping us with that today. So, so if everyone can take a moment right now to make a gift, you can call our hotline, you can pledge on the website. We're going to give you updates as we go. Remember the big news, of course, the board is going to match every gift dollar for dollar up to $30,000. So every gift will be matched up to $30,000. And I do want to call it some names. Matter of fact, they're handing me cards as we speak. Rhoda, thank you for your pledge tonight. Joseph, thank you for your pledge of $2,500 tonight. Listen to some of the locations, team that we're getting pledge, pledges from. Wisconsin, Carolyn Wyzetta, Ken and Linda in St. Cloud. I miss seeing Ken and Linda tonight. Matter of fact, from across the country, Fort Mills, South Carolina. Sandra and Steve, thank you for your gift. Alana and Matt in San Francisco. Chanhassen, Minnesota. Al and Caroline from uh, Chanhassen. The list goes on and on. Decorah, Illinois. Fordville, North Carolina. Verona, uh, Virginia. Maple Grove, Minnesota. I mean, the support is just absolutely remarkable. We are now at $153,380. Wow. So we have hit our first goal of getting to $150,000. Our stretch goal is now in sight. And Tina, when you were describing to me the magical stretch goal, what really what you said is a little bit of flexibility for us, just a little bit of a buffer. That's a big deal for us. It is a big deal. And I think coming out of a pandemic, there are a lot of uncertain things as we move into the next year, even though we're so overjoyed to be doing it. We don't know exactly what the next year will bring and a little bit of flexibility will make all the difference. So that stretch goal, I tell you, our board of directors will be very happy if, if they can, uh, welcome that stretch goal into their meeting on June 2nd. Well, and I do think it's really important that Tina and I express such sincere gratitude for all of you that are pledging. Matter of fact, this event over the last several years has had tremendous growth. It's been shocking for me uh, being in the ballroom and seeing the support. And last year, what happened online, 
Your support is not taken for granted. We are so thankful tonight. Uh, there's no doubt that we have a chance now of hitting 175,000. And as we do that, we're gonna check in with my friend, our board chair. I think he's got a raging party in Edina. Let's go to <laughs> Phil. Phil, can you hear me? We are, look at <laughs> Phil, we're getting close. Hello, Glenn. Hello, NLC community. It is so good to be with you all today. Thank you for tuning in. And we are having a great day in South Minneapolis. The weather has cooperated and I am with some of the best people in the world. We've got some of our board members here, a few of our singers and supporters, and we are gathered safely in celebration and support of NLC. We could not be happier to be here, Glenn. Now, Phil, I do want to tell you, and I sincerely mean this, Tina and I just rave about you. We are so appreciative for your leadership, for all that you've done. You've emceed this event. You're the board chair. You've been a remarkable pillar for us, but tell us as board chair, what you're looking forward to specifically with us opening and what the plans are in the coming year? Well, first of all, I think number one, we're excited about coming back to live music in, a, in our community this, this November, everybody. So we've got a very ambitious season planned for next year. And I hope you'll all join us and be a part of that, whether it's live at one of our concerts or whether you tune in virtually, we would love to have you with us. You know, COVID, as tough as it's been for, for everybody, I like to call out what I, what I say are COVID silver linings. And you know, one of the silver linings of COVID for National Lutheran Choir is that we've developed a national audience. And in fact, we've developed an international audience. We have been 100% floored at, the, at who has been tuning in from all over the world to watch National Lutheran Choir, and it's because of your support. It's because of you all giving today that we're able to have this programming. We're able to come to you today like this, even though we can't be together physically for now. We will soon, I can promise you that. <laughs> but we are very excited about next year. We are very excited about what we're gonna be doing for this community, and we are all part of this community. So thank you for being with us today. Phil, by the way, I just added this. You look like a movie star right now. You've got your sunglasses and everything absolutely stunning. So here's what I just added. Anyone that pledges gets a picture with our board chair, Phil, the movie star. A man who does not need a huge introduction, but I'm sure has missed the in-person gatherings more than anyone else. David, it is so good to see you in Phil's backyard. Come up and share with everybody just how excited you are for us to be able to gather in person and have fellowship in person with the choir. Oh, it's it's just going to be off the charts. You know, we we have been singing together all year. We've gotten together through Zoom all year, but it's all it's been virtually. And I imagine that when we finally can do our September gathering, our first rehearsal, it's going to be a little bit like grandparents who were separated from grandchildren during COVID, staying in touch with Zoom and FaceTime and telephone, but there's nothing like that hug, you know, the real live hug. And that first rehearsal is so going to be like that. But the whole year is going to be that way. I think we're just, we're just so itching to go. Um, I think we're, we're eager to be back in touch with our rituals to adding the candles back to all saints and the reading of names. And we have so much to grieve, so much loss to grieve, especially with the pandemic, that the all saints is just going to be an intensified experience, uh, both the live one and the one that we'll release virtually. And to be able to be back in the Basilica, that magical space that we look forward to every year. And um, also the the winter program, you know, church choirs have also been starved from singing and churches themselves. So there's this pent up energy that I mentioned earlier that we want to be there to help people uh, let that out, let that gift just explode. And so the midwinter program will include church choirs and they'll not only do the tune up with us, but we'll also include them in that winter program gathering. But the main thing comes at the very end of the year culminating years of work that we've had commissioning Lament of the Earth, music by Steve Heitzig and text by Susan Palo Cherwin. Uh, I've seen the score, I've been studying it. It's a profound piece of music. Uh, uh, it's just gonna hit the heart. And I think all of us are ready for a different topic, don't you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, to have something that we should be rallying around like 
the, the um, environment is just critical and to be able to take it on tour. I'm just so glad we're approaching this year. We're not just putting one toe in the water at a time. We are stepping in, just diving into the water and getting wet. And I'm just very, very excited. And I think all of us are too, aren't we? Yes! yes. <laughs> Great job. And Phil, by the way, we're inching closer. We're now at $154,060. Yes. So we're getting closer to $175,000. Please, everybody, now is the time to make that phone call. Call one of our choir members. Go online and give. You can send me a message on Facebook. You can send a pigeon carrier. We will take it all. So thanks, everybody. And back to Glenn and Tina. Thank you, Phil. And as folks are pledging right now, it's time for us to celebrate with some music. Let's hear the choir singing Allelu. Let the people all sing. Hallelujah. Lou, indeed. Boy, it'll be exciting to gather and enjoy the choir in person again. Won't it? We just, we can't wait. And speaking of coming back strong, communities in the Pacific Northwest are already organizing to bring NLC out to their communities on Earth Day in 2022. So let's take a little trip to beautiful Seattle right now and visit with our board member, Paul Hoffman. Hi, hey, Paul. Tina. Hi, Glenn. How is it out there in Seattle this afternoon? Well, it's pretty Seattle-y today. That's why we're inside. <laughs> Misty, moisty, gray. Oh, but, I love that. <laughs> but we're happy anyway to be uh, part of the NLC Gala. Well, thank you all for being with us. Paul, will you introduce your guests? I'd be so happy to do that. Right beside me is my longtime friend in music making here in Seattle, Beth Ann Bonacroy. And behind us are our wonderful and supportive spouses, Paul Hanna and my wife, Donna Hoffman. Thank you so much for being with us. It just makes my heart sing to know that NLC has reached the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> we love that too. I can't tell you how much. We like to think out here that we're part of what puts the national in National Lutheran Choir. <clears throat> I got to tell you though, Tina, through this last challenging year, we have so appreciated the opportunity to be more connected with the choir through all of the digital content that was produced as a response to COVID-19. We got to hear the choir in the Pacific Northwest more than ever this year. And we hope that the future brings more of the same. Absolutely. Well, that is certainly one of the things that we will do with the funds that we're raising today is to continue to provide that content. And it means so much to us as well. That'll be just great. 
So next year, there is also for the Pacific Northwest, a really special opportunity for your community to hear the choir. And this time it's in person again, right? Right. We are so excited to share that Seattle and Tacoma will be the sites where the National Lutheran Choir will premiere Lament of the Earth, composed by Steve Heitzig with Susan Palocherwin's amazing and thoughtful text. And here's a great gala announcement to share with the National Lutheran Choir lovers everywhere. We've secured a $10,000 lead grant for the Seattle concert that we hope will be matched by 10 other $1,000 grants from our area to bring the choir here next April. With that, we'll have a $20,000 running start to get you all here and singing live. Paul, that is incredible news. Thank you so much, Seattle and friends, for, for moving this project forward. And the Pacific Northwest has such a strong commitment to creation care, Paul. It's the perfect place to premiere Lament of the Earth. Yeah, and isn't that great news about our Running Start grant as well? We, we just can't wait to have the choir back to Seattle. One part of Lament of the Earth that we are extra enthusiastic about is that it will include a children's choir led by <laughs> Beth Ann. <laughs> Beth Ann, can you tell us a little bit about your choir and what, 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 what will they be doing in this project? Uh, I conduct the middle school age division of the Northwest Girl Choir. And so we will be singing the children's choir portion of the work. Care for the earth and the health of the planet are very important issues for my young singers. And to be able to give voice to those concerns through music and at the same time perform alongside such skilled adult musicians, um, that's just a wonderful confluence of opportunities. We're very excited about it. And we're so grateful to you and your children singers for joining us, having the voice of children as part of this project and part of this um, lament of the earth and hopefully a turnaround to future care of the earth couldn't be more important. I think we're gonna take a minute now and check in with Glenn to see how we're doing on our total. So look at this, everybody. We are now at $157,610. We have just over $17,000 left to raise to hit our stretch goal of 175,000. There's no doubt that tonight has been wildly more successful than we ever thought possible. So anything that you can do to help make a donation in the next few minutes or in the coming days to get us to our stretch goal of 175,000. And Tina, I think I'm gonna add a couple things to this. Anyone that pledges, I'm going to do a guided tour of my home church, Vinji Lutheran, in my hometown of Wilmer. Now, this is a big, big deal. That is a big deal. But I was sharing that joke with my wife this afternoon. My, my, even my wife didn't think it was that funny. But what we have added, and I just decided this, everyone who pledges is getting a shot of Akavit at Phil's house in Edina. So, Phil, if you have hundreds of people migrating over to your house. That is the reason why. But in all seriousness to everyone, we are so appreciative for what you've done tonight. We are laying the foundation to come back as strong as ever. We are excited to see everybody in person. And before I conclude my remarks, I think every single person watching will agree with me. The woman standing right next to me deserves a huge round of applause for her dedication, her leadership. We've had a blessed and steady hand at the yeah. wheel. Tina, we cannot thank you enough for being the leader that you are. Thank you, Glenn. That that leaves me speechless. <laughs> and and I, I can't tell you how humbled I am to do work on behalf of this incredible choir and organization. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you for your support. As we wind up here, we're going to give you another view of the happenings over at Phil and Ty's house. I hope they are breaking out the Akavit because we're going to be over very shortly to join them and to celebrate. And I want to say to all of you who are watching right now, be sure to stick around for the credits. We have some very special messages for you and some of our wonderful singers sharing some of their bloopers from the past somewhat challenging year of virtual recording. So a great big thank you to all of you for your support and for joining us today for Light Dawns.
Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Steve. You know, giving is more than just making a contribution. Giving is making a difference. And for years, so many of you have. Absolutely. We'd like to thank you for coming this afternoon and for joining us in this celebration. So what we want to say is we are so grateful for your kind hearts and for being a part of the National Lutheran Choir's story. Thank you for being with us today and supporting the National Lutheran Choir's continued ministry. To all who have supported us throughout this season, thank you so much. I want to extend my thanks to our supporters who, especially during the pandemic, have allowed the National Lutheran Choir to reach audiences across the globe. Thank you for allowing NLC into your home over the last year. It's been our pleasure. And with your support, we'll see you again soon with more live and virtual programming. A hundred thank yous? No. A thousand thank yous? No. A million thank yous for your support. Thanks from all of our hearts. Thank you so much for making it possible for the NLC to sing together again next season. We are so grateful for your support. With your help, we can continue to hear the music that touches our hearts and lifts our spirits. Thank you so much for making it possible for National Lutheran Choir to sing again next season. Thank you for your part in bringing the choir back to live events. Thank you so much for supporting NLC's music, family, and outreach next year. Thank you, we are bursting with gratitude and appreciation for you and your support. With your continued support, we look forward to connecting with audiences both in person and virtually over the coming year. From beautiful Asheville, North Carolina, we're grateful for your support for the NLC. Whether you are new to the National Lutheran Choir or have been with us since the beginning, thank you for your support. Thank you so much for your generous support of the National Lutheran Choir. And we look forward to seeing you in our audiences, both near and far. Gracias. Manga talk, danka, thank you. 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 This is me recording for the National Lutheran Choir in my black robe. Halloween. Oh gosh. <laughs> Start with some warm-ups. <laughs> one black beetle red on the back blood, the other black beetle red blue. One black beetle red on the back blood, the other black beetle red blue. Oh! I know, but come back around. <laughs> Sorry, look. <laughs> I know he would. I know he would. Yeah, okay, okay. Me next, please. <coughs> <coughs> so pleasantly surprised at how fun it was. I gotta redo that. Take 57. <sighs> Three, two, 
One, start. Take 502. Before and you. <clears throat> this is the one I can feel it. Take bajillion and seven. Yep, nailed it. <laughs> These D's, it's like, I thought I was singing D, but he wasn't singing the same pitch as me. It's like, weird. That wasn't my part. That's disappointing. Oh!